Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another amazing geometry node. And this one, by the time you've played around with it a little bit, I'm sure you won't be able to do without it. Now stay till the end till I show you everything that this geometry node can do. It's a lot more than what's on first glance, that's for sure. And also, when you first get this geometry node, this is the scene that you actually get. So this is the actual demo file showing you everything that we can actually do with it. We have three geometry nodes in this pack, actually. One of them can give you results like this. The other one can give you results so you can stack it in crates or actually use it to have fire embers and things like that. And the other one is the book. So let's first of all come in then and make sure as well that if you don't know how to use these geometry nodes, stay till the end and I'm going to show you how to bring them in to your own projects. So let's first of all press Shift A, bring in a cube. And then what we'll do is we'll come on over Add in a geometry node, and the one we're going to bring in, first of all, is the crate stacker. So this is this one here. Now you can see that I can hide the box or unhide the box. Let's just unhide it for now. And what we're going to do is click on our collection, and the one I'm going to pick is going to be apples. And you can see straight away now, we've actually got apples that barely, barely go over the sides of here. If I hide the actual um, crate now, you can see this is what we actually get. So some apples a little bit bigger, some a little bit smaller. We can actually change that by bringing down the gaps and you'll see now it can make them more bigger or more smaller or more unique actual size like so. So you can see we've got apples like that. The good thing is as well, we can actually bring this up on the fly or we can press tab and we can actually bring this out. So if I pull this out like so, you can see now we actually end up with more apples. Then it's a question of just uh, increasing the gap between them or decreasing it and then you can bring them closer together like so and end up with something like this. And you can see now we can actually fit those in any of these crates. We can also as well um, change the scale of them to make sure they fit in the crates now and get them around about the same size. So you can see now, if you had a crate this big, I can actually put them in there. So really, really easy to use the actual crate stacker. You can use it with things like potatoes, things like um, bananas. And the best thing as well, what we've also done is We've also enabled you to actually overflow your crates as well. So if I come in and actually turn this up, you will see now that I can actually overflow the crates like so. And if I come in and just put my box back on, now you can see how they're actually stacking up next to each other. All right, so that's the actual crate. Now let's come to the next one then, which is the book stacker. So this one's really, really nice. Let's press Shift D, bring over my actual bookcase and then all i'm going to do is again i'm going to bring in another cube so shift a let's bring in a cube and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make the cube a little bit smaller i'm going to press s and y just to pull it out or s and x pull it out a little bit i'm going to reset all the transformations like so add in modifier and we're going to bring in the book so book stacker as you can see here the book collection is going to be these so if i click on this you can see that we've got one that says books bring that in and there we go. Now, if I press uh, one on the number pad, just to go into front view, and then I'm going to sit these on top of my shelf like so. I'm going to push them back a little bit. And this can work with any of your books, any collections, up to you how much you put in there. And then what we're going to do is increase the count like so. And it's as easy as that. And all of this is actually randomized. And you could change them on the fly as well. So you can come into these books, change them on the fly, and it will update with the collection. Now, I've not got to the best bit about the books yet. You can see that we've also got an offset randomness to pull some books out or keep them in like so. We've also got a rotation probability. So if I turn this up and turn this up, you can see I can actually start rotating my books down. And then from there, what I can do is I can make them a little bit smaller and make them fit in place like so. Let's pull them back a little bit and like so. Really, really easy to use. And you'll also see that if I increase the count, it just keeps increasing. Now, the other good thing about this one is as well, that I can also come in and change the height. So you can see I've got a width here, I've got a width randomness. So I can actually also come in, change the width randomness on the fly again. You can see it changes some of the books. So you only need to really create a few books and then you can do the rest from the actual geometry node. We can also change the depth on the fly as well. And we can actually change the height as well and everything will be done for you. So really, really easy. And then what you can do is you can just get the amount of books that you want in this uh, bookshelf. So something like this, and then press Shift D, bring it down to the next shelf. And then all I'm going to do is just change the seed. And there you go. And you can see so easy now to actually fill books however you want to, whether you want them a real, you know, mishmash. We can even turn this up a little bit more, as you can see, or turn it down. However you actually want it is up to you. And you can just fill up bookcases 
libraries with actual ease. All right, so that's that one. Let's delete that one out of the way. And then we're on to the final one. Again, I'm going to bring in an actual cube. And then I'm going to press S and Z to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to make this one a little bit thinner because I do want something like this that I've actually created here. It's great for actually arraying things um, next to each other and randomizing them. So I'm going to press Control A, reset all the transforms. Let's go in then to the final geometry node, which will be the actual basic stacker. So if I bring the basic stacker in, pick my object, which will be this bamboo. And you can see now we've got all stacked up so this is great for scrolls it's great for anything that you want to actually stack up including leaves which i've got over there which i'll move to in just one second now what i want to do is i just want to change the angle of um, which one they're on so if i come to this let's put them horizontal like so let's press rz and 90. this one here is just select the longest angle so you can see here, this is the longest angle and then it'll stack them up for you now the other thing is i can change the scale on the fly like so again I can also change the scale randomness, which is really, really handy because you don't want to mess around going in there and changing, you know, all of these scales and things like that. So let's just change them a little bit more like so. And then finally, I can ch uh, change the flip probability if it's like a stack of books or something of, of here. Obviously, you're not going to see too much about the flip probability because you can see they're just flipping on this axis. In other words, what it's doing is it's rolling them over. So you can see if I move, where is it? This one here. You can see them moving over and that's great if you've got a load of scrolls you know and, and you don't want to actually rotate them around or anything i will show you that actually with the leaves all right then so from here then i can actually come in now and bring this down and have them all next to each other like so and then what i can do is i can come in and pull them out and it will just keep pulling them out now all i need to do is just bring down this gap so if i bring this down you can see just how easy it is then to create something like a bamboo roof um, and you can also hide the box, of course, and bring it back. So really, really easy to use. All right, so let's actually come to the leaves now. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to bring this up. So I'm going to bring it up like that so we can actually see what we're doing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the cylinder. So I'm going to take off the cylinder, come and grab my uh, leaf then, like so. And you can see we end up like with something like this, first of all. I'm going to change these over then to the horizontal view. And then what I'm going to do is change the scale. And you can see... That's how that's going to work. Now, if I come over now and grab the end of here, you can see I can pull them all out. I can also then alter the scale of these so I can make them bigger or smaller, however I want. And from there, we can actually change the direction that they're pointing in. For instance, we can change the scale of these. We can also change the scale randomness if we really want to. And you can see just really, really easy to use. We can also change the horizontal. So you can see now we've got them stacked like this. And then we can actually pull this up. So if I come in now, pull this up, you can see that I can stack them together. And then I'll bring down the gaps. And you can see now we've got something like this. Really, really easy to use then. Lots and lots of different ways of doing things with these. Uh, infinite things actually you can do with them really. It's just all in your, you know, in your imagination what you actually want to do with these. Now, for those that struggle um, bringing these into other projects, it's very simple. You've got everything laid out here. You will notice on each of these. So we've got the basic stacker. We've got the uh, the book um, on this one here, I think it is. There it is, the book stacker. And then we've got the this one here, which is the crate stacker. Now, let's say you want the crate stacker in another project. All you need to do is just grab this, press Control c and then in your new one, all you would do is press Control v and then that would just put a new one into your actual Blender project. It's as simple as that. The other way you can do it is come into File, in your other project, go into Append, and then go into um, the Geo Stacker, double click in it. Not that, sorry, let's go and try that again. So what I'll do is I'll show you which one it is. So Geo Stacker, here it is. And you will have one that says No Tree. And within the node tree, then you'll see book stacker, basic stacker, and crate stacker. You can just double click one of these, and then you'll find that it's over in your geometry node as well. Now, the other thing you can do is as well is you can also put these into your asset manager. So you can also, let's just quickly create that. So I'm going to come down, asset manager, here we are. Now, I want to put one of these into asset manager. So let's say I want to put these books in there, uh, this one here. Um, let's just put it onto uh, our current file. So there shouldn't be a lot in here apart from all of these crates. And then all I'm going to do is go over to my geometry node and I'm basically going to um, come down to it, right click, and you can see I can mark it as asset. The moment I mark it as asset, then it is actually into my asset manager. And then you're free to actually bring it in to any files that way.
All right, everyone. So let's then just go back and just reiterate. So you can see that within the actual demo file, you will get the uh, leaves. So the kind of leaf stacker, which is called, if I click on it, the basic stacker. We've also got them, which is for crates. And you will have all of these within there as well. So some coconuts, some potatoes, some apples. And then finally, we've got the actual book stacker. So everything you need to stack anything from marketplaces to libraries to everything in between, all in one place. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you really, really like this video, give us a like and subscribe. And don't forget, you can get all of these things for free. That includes over 20 geometry nodes, over 40 courses, hundreds and hundreds of hours of content for free with our Patreon. So just by joining our Patreon, you will receive so much stuff. In fact, it's one of the best in the industries. So if you really want to support us and get a load of free stuff, then join our Patreon. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.